Hello everyone, what's up? Tonight I bring you another Race for Terra community video. Back in October we had the idea to do a Black Shields painting competition, which finally took place on February 13. Like all my community events, this was open to mid and top tier patrons. Let us now take a look at their amazing work. Jan's foreboding river lord is a former champion of the 16th legion, the Sons of Horus. With a flowing cloak, a boarding shield and a Justerian axe, he cuts an imposing figure. This completely kitbashed model sports a combination of 3D printed parts like the shield, bits from both 30k and 40k models and an awesome base made from scratch. Everyone on the Discord knows that Jan is great at conversions and this is a prime example of that. My favorite elements is the pauldrons, which I think look spectacular. The finish on the medals is great, and both the decal with the Eye of Horus and the freehand Aquila fit perfectly with the theme of the model. And speaking of theme, when explaining why he picked this particular project, Jan writes, I really enjoy building and painting character models, as there is much room to make them stand out, rules-wise and models-wise. In terms of narrative, he explains that he came up with the idea of a former Legion champion who was not initially chosen to be called on Isvan 3. Thus, he only recently deserted the Sons of Horus and joined a Black Shield warband. This shows in the armor just being repainted in black without removing the original Legion colors. Well explained, Jan. And all in all, this is an impressive job, which obtained third place in our little contest. Lucas Librarian also sports an axe and black armor, but I think most of the similarities end there. Most of you can probably recognize the model. This is a limited edition Trader Librarian from 2016, which Luca picked up during a trip to Warhammer World. Let us hope that such trips become possible again soon. But I digress, you can see that Luca opted for a really dark and sinister look, a decision which I applaud. Not only is the armor chipped and dirty, which I like obviously, but most importantly, Luca was brave enough to stay away from the usual fluorescent green or yellow for the witchy poo effect coming out of the Lightning Claw. I think the subdued purple that he went for instead is so much better. When it comes to narrative, Luca explains that his character is a former follower of the Nemean River and that eventually he turned away from his lord and fully embraced his newfound freedom to become a slave to the Dark Gods. Luca completed this model as a palette cleanser in between more and more additions to his Dark Angels army. I think this is a great example of how a change of pace can be beneficial to any hobbyist. What is this, another second place? Yeah, that's right. These guys had the exact same score even after a second vote to break the tie, so I just gave them both second place. Rick's River Lord is once again a very different model, but like Jan's, it's also extensively kitbashed. The more learned among you will no doubt recognize a baton, first of all, but also the Mark II White Scar's head, which I think gives it a lot of character, a Red Butcher's arm, and a Volcat Charger from the Alpha Legion, Learning and Terminators, among other things. On top of that, Rick has made subtle modifications like creating additional pterygies and bonding studs from puree tubing and water filter beads, as he often does with his vehicles. When describing the narrative that he had in mind for his river lord, Rick writes, Under the helmet, I think he's something like Henry Rollins. <laughs> I would like to note that it was Rick's amazing Black Shields army which gave me the idea to run this event in the first place. The reason for this is that his army has shown us time and again how original and creative an Astartes army can be if we move away from the tired conventions which tend to dominate this genre. Rick's patented multi-layered chipping and faded paint finish has been a true inspiration for me and for many others in the Discord, so thank you Rick. When he joined our Discord community in November, Stefan was new to things like chipping, enamels or pigments, all of which he's used here to great effect. If you're wondering about the provenance of this Black Shields Librarian, take a closer look. Under that awesome, dirty, off-white, covered in glyphs, you can see the colors of the 15th Legion, the Thousand Suns. That and the corroded, weather-beaten metals are my favorite elements in this excellent and totally unique model. That's not all, however. Can you identify the weapon? Those of you who, like me, are Warhammer Fantasy diehards will no doubt have spotted that Tomb King's Kopesh very fitting, after all, for someone who used to be a son of Magnus. Regarding the base, which I think plays a big role in conveying the story of this character, Stefan writes, I took the freedom in this challenge to experiment a bit on building a more extensive base, building a battle-worn wall. 
With a well-deserved top score from his peers, Stefan has really showed us how experimenting with new techniques and venturing into the path less traveled can really help you progress in the hobby. A late entry, Joe worked feverishly to get this awesome model ready for our competition. Joe explains that his completely kitbashed Black Shield is a former Loyalist champion of the 3rd Legion, who survived Isvan III, and I quote, thanks to his void hardened frame, allowing him to now build a small guerrilla force against a tainted being he once called Father. Personally, I love this Thalex Astartes conversion, but my favorite element is the decal work and the weathering on the cloak. Looking forward to the next one, Joe. James is a veteran of several of our community videos, and as you may know, he mainly collects 40k Death Guard. However, like many of us, he has been inspired by Rick's Black Shields, which is why he decided to mix 40k and 30k a little bit coming up then with his model. But since we 30k players are all gatekeepers, we just told him to bugger off, right? Oh no, wait, we didn't. As a result, what you see here is a very interesting blend of both genres and painting techniques. We have some 40k-like touches, like the use of color shift paints, but at the same time we also have chipping and oils. Oh, and this time James went for a Zone Mortalis-like base without tufts. Did you think I would disqualify you, James? Let's face it, guys. Pretty Space Marines with creamy blends, clean edge highlights and perfect airbrush gradients are a dime a dozen. And once you've seen one, you've seen them all. On the other hand, grimy, gritty, unique Astartes, like the ones you've seen here, tell you a story and never cease to surprise. So, if you too want to break away from the shackles of convention and participate in events like this, check out my Patreon page and join the Weathering Lodge. Thank you all, and remember, keep it up and weather it out.